Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. Hey, I'm Joel. I'm Daniel. I'm Megan. I'm Grandpa. I'm Mimi. And we're some of the Veggie Boys. And girls. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. Welcome back, everybody, to this chilly Pennsylvania morning. Right now, we're in the greenhouse where it's nice and comfortable, but we're working on feeding animals this morning. We've got a few things we need to accomplish today, and one thing we need to accomplish is pulling some corn out of the bin. We're almost finished with corn harvest. We just have a few more acres that we need to squeeze into the bin. In order to do that, we need to draw some out. We're gonna try and get three truckloads pulled out of here and taken to the mill today. And we're also gonna fill up the Mac with corn. And by doing that, we're hoping that we'll just have enough room to finish the rest of corn harvest into the bin. Because if we can finally get corn harvest finished, that'll be a big job done for the year. Now I had mentioned that we got a few different jobs going on today and something that we really need to do is bag up potatoes. A lot of people like to have mashed potatoes around this time of the year so we sell a lot through the farm market and a lot of restaurants do turkey dinners around here so they're going to need potatoes as well. So we're going to be bagging up a lot of potatoes to get them up to the customers. That way everybody can have everything they need for their special day. <laughs> and you know, that may be something you guys never thought about. When it comes to certain times of the year, for example, right now, potatoes and cabbage are really, really popular. So we need to have plenty in the farm market because if we don't, we won't be able to sell it. Now, because we had such a wet year, we have to be very careful with our potatoes because it's very easy for potatoes to spoil in a wet year. So as we run them over the grater again, we're gonna examine each potato to make sure it's nice and clean and it's a nice, healthy potato. Now you will notice this isn't running too, too fast. And the whole reason for that is to just give me enough time to look at each potato, make sure everything looks nice, so we're not giving our customer a product that's not up to our standards. Now if there are some potatoes that in our eyes are not good, then we'll do one of two things with them. One, we'll eat them ourselves, or two, we'll feed them to the cows, because cows love potatoes. It's one of their favorite snacks. Grammy, about how many pies do you think you're going to make for this Thanksgiving? About 400. <laughs> about 400, she says so casually. And not only is she going to be working on pies, there's breads, cakes, and she's even working on nut roll right now. It is about time you got out of the house and got to work. I just got back home. I went for a little ride to pick up some potato bags from the neighbors. So now I've got everything that we need and we can finish filling them up. Now, out of all of the potatoes, these were the last five bags that we needed. They're now filled, so all I have to do is close them up. Now all we have to do is take them up into the farm market, but I believe they're using the skid steer loader right now. I just got all the potatoes bagged up. What are we working on in here? Building a chicken pen. So right now we are putting a roof on this little pen and the reason for that is because a lot of people just like to drop cats off at a farm. Oh yeah, don't just drop your cats off places people, that's not good. So we have to put this protective barrier over the top because we don't want them getting in here and harming our peeps. Now something that not a lot of people know, uh, the day before one of these little baby chickens is hatched, uh, they eat the yolk inside the egg. 
And that yolk gives them enough nutritional value that we're able to ship them in the mail like this. They'll actually be okay for up to several days. I think it's almost three days that they don't need to eat. That yolk has enough nutritional value for them. Now, even though they can go for several days without eating, it's still good to get them out of the box as early as you can because it starts to calm them down. They're not as stressed then, and we can start getting them more comfortable with their new area where they're gonna live. So the first thing we do then is pull them out and dip their beaks into the water. I don't know if you need to dip their beaks into the water, but that's something we've always done. Now these are not all of the chickens we plan on getting. We still have some more that are coming in. But for now, we'd rather have the chickens that are here be inside the pen where they have enough room rather than being in that little box. Because that box works really good for shipping them, but we don't want to leave them in there. We want to get them into their pen so they can calm down, relax, and uh, they can start running around. Remember kids, always check your tire pressure before you put a load of corn in. Stop making fun of Matt. <laughs> He's not even here. That's a bigger jack than we had. Good deal, Daniel. We had a jack holding this up, but uh, it could not handle the weight of the full truck with the corn. So we had to put a new jack in there. So with the temperature going down, uh, you might be getting tire pressure indicators on your car. Same for trucks. Made a mistake. We forgot to check tire pressure before we loaded the truck. We were in a bit of a rush. Just wanted to get it loaded, get it going, get the day going. So I got the truck fully loaded. Tire pressure was too low, but we didn't notice. Once we filled it and made the turn, just popped it right off the bead, all the air is out. So we just need to pick it up off the ground, get the bead reset and get the tire pressure back to where it needs to go. And then she's cherry. All righty everyone, we were able to get the tire back on the bead. We had to use a ratchet strap and some other methods, but we were able to get it back on and now it's holding air. Now that we've got our truck all up and running, we're all gonna head inside to the farm market because it's lunchtime. Grammy, what are we having for lunch? Chicken and sandwiches. The store she bought it from? Chicken. The brand. So for lunch today, we are having the chicken sandwiches and I don't even need to go up to the house to see Callie because she's down here working with Mama. They're helping Megan today. They're bagging stuff up here in the back room, right? Are you excited to be down here? She doesn't know yet. Now we just got finished with lunch and we're actually gonna head out into the field and pick a vegetable. And I know what you're gonna tell me, Andrew, you said you were all done picking vegetables. I saw that a few videos ago. I said we were done with all the vegetables except for cabbage because cabbage is what we need because our family makes something very special with cabbage and people love it so dad what are we going to be making with the cabbage sauerkraut now is this like a secret secret sauerkraut recipe it's been in my family for generations now when it comes to sauerkraut it takes a few weeks for the cabbage to ferment to the point where you have sauerkraut so this cabbage that we're picking this wouldn't be ready for around thanksgiving time that's why we had already done some sauerkraut. Now I wasn't able to share it with you guys. We've got our first batch of sauerkraut already done and it's in the fermentation process, but now we're gonna be doing more sauerkraut so that it's ready for the end of December. Now I don't know if you guys are big into sauerkraut, our family is, and we eat a lot of sauerkraut. Now there is actually a difference between the sauerkraut that we had started making a few weeks ago compared to what we're making now. Now it's always been told to us by many of the older folks that come in the farm market and even my dad's grandfather that the best cabbage is a cabbage that has been hit with a freeze. They say that a cabbage that has been hit with the freeze, like this cabbage we have here, actually has a sweeter flavor. I mean, it tastes like good cabbage to me. And they say a sweeter cabbage makes a better sauerkraut. So I'll believe what they tell me because everything tastes good. <laughs> I really can't tell if the cabbage is sweeter, but I will tell you that when it's frozen, it is much colder. My hands are numb right now. Do you like that fancy cabbage knife? This is very handy, I like it. How do you feel knowing that our viewers take care of you? I appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of the viewers are super generous. They have sent some really nice things to us. A lot of baby gifts, which we use a lot. I appreciate that. They've sent us that knife, and then one time, well, a couple times, 
dad was being a little crazy in the videos and someone said he needed decaf coffee they sent us a whole box of decaf coffee just for dad and he drank it all Now, Dad, some people might be curious. Why did you start making sauerkraut? My mother told me to. That's a nice head of cabbage you got there. Beautiful. I don't know everybody, does that look like enough cabbage for sauerkraut? My fingers are cold. Now we were driving home, but we stopped really quick by our kale. You can see by the length of the stems on our kale that we've picked a lot of kale this year. Uh, but we haven't been picking too much kale as of recently because we haven't been selling it. But if you look at the kale, it looks like something has been picking at the kale. Something with teeth. And uh, the neighbor's cows haven't been out because when they get out, we get a call because everyone thinks it's our cows. So we're thinking the deer are starting to eat all of this kale, which that's okay because we're not harvesting it right now, but it's just neat to see something like that. I'm thinking because of the freeze, uh, there's not too much food out here for the deer, but they're finding it and they seem to like kale. We've got the cabbage moved inside the farm market. Now you can see our pepper reserves are getting low. We're really happy we went through and picked off all those peppers before that freeze. We've been selling quite a few. We really didn't have too much going on this afternoon. Daniel's been driving truck. Joel's been chopping corn stalks. Dad had to go and pick up some more bags for potatoes. And I've been working around the farm market, so we've really been busy, but we haven't done too much. The only thing that happened this afternoon that was even, I guess, kind of remotely exciting was we got the rest of the peeps delivered. Now we got all of the chickens in the mail and they all left the hatchery at the same time but they didn't arrive at the post office at the same time, which I don't know how that's possible, but it happened. We did a quick examination of the chickens just to make sure everybody was healthy and everybody was healthy and looked happy. Well, I, I really can't tell if they're happy. They were peeping and making noise. It seems like happy peeps to me. The sun's going down and that's given us a beautiful sunset, but it is starting to get cold. <laughs> Where's Lefty? I would imagine he's feeding horses now. He left with a tractor and never came back. Well, you know, he makes all those left turns. He gets himself lost sometimes. That's what I'm worried about. Joel, we were so worried you got lost. What, 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 what do you mean? <laughs> he was eating chocolate this whole time. That's what it looks like. I found the tractor in the shop. He must have never went at all. No, I wasn't eating chocolate the whole time. We have more than one tractor. It keeps getting colder and colder, but those sunsets keep looking better and better. And he was doing so well at finding his pants. We're having kielbasa and sauerkraut on mashed potatoes. Oh, Grammy, that sounds delicious. Now, Lauren and Callie aren't with us right now because Callie was down at the farm market most of the day. She didn't nap well, and she's like, she's not a happy baby right now. So Lauren is taking care of her, and we're gonna start eating. Alrighty, everyone, we're about to sit down and eat dinner for tonight, so that means this is where we're gonna end the video. I wanna thank everyone for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.